Just cause you want to feel the open road doesn't mean you want to hear it. Firestone Weather Grip Tires with less noise for quiet comfort. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. John Ziegler Jr. has rubber running through his veins. He's the third generation of a 102-year-old business. John grew up busting tires at the family retail store in Canton, Ohio. After graduating college, he worked for a Firestone store for a short time, but the family business called him back. A jack-of-all-trades, John has worked on the retail, commercial, and distribution side of Ziegler Tire's growing businesses, and today serves as the company's vice president. Over the years, Ziegler Tire has grown to include three distribution centers, two retread plants, 16 commercial centers, and seven retail locations. Welcome to Johnny G and Friends. I'm Johnny G, and on today's podcast, we're joined by my good friend, John Ziegler, Vice President of Ziegler Tire. Zig, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, Johnny boy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, you're looking good there in your Browns outfit and everything, man. Feeling pretty good right now, buddy. I'm feeling pretty good. I Being a Cleveland sports fan, is uh, there's, there's nothing more challenging than uh, expectations that have not been met since 1964. So uh, who knows? Better, better late than never. Better late than well, never. I want to thank you in advance for your quarterback from Ohio State to, to the Bears because we definitely needed a lot of help ourselves. Well, it took us 30 to get one to last just more than three years. So I know you're, I can feel your pain. I can feel your pain. Absolutely. So, Zig, you were literally born in the tire business. I mean, Ziegler Tires over 100 years old. Uh, but if I remember correctly, when you came out of, uh, you graduated from college, you, you didn't immediately come back into the business where you started busting tires at an early age. Why was that? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I was, yeah, after I graduated, uh, from Bowling Green State University, you know, I grew up in the business, changing tires, changing oil, pumping gas you know, all that stuff. And at that time, uh, Ziegler was basically just four, four locations. Originally there were four brothers and they had four stores and that was it. You know, you get out of college, you know, you're all big and bad and you're going to go change the world. So, you know, I started interviewing at college and I interviewed like Procter and Gamble and found out I could go sell toilet paper or uh, Owens Corning. I could sell uh, Corningware or something like that. That didn't seem exciting either. And then uh, up in Toledo, the Firestone Tire and Rubber Company was interviewing and uh, went to uh, went to that interview and, uh, you know, just kind of felt at home and, and uh, fired away from that. It was uh and it was great. I mean, the training was great. The people I met, <clears throat> never forget the first day on the job. You know, I walk in with a three-piece suit. Remember the old navy blue with the little pinstripes and stuff on it? Oh, yeah. And I walk in and I see the guy behind the counter. His name was Mike Cox, my first store manager, first boss I ever worked for. And he's just got a little smirk on his face. And you know, I get in there and introduce myself and everything like that. And uh, at that time, Firestone was in the middle of another, another recall, unfortunately. But, you know, he said... Uh, he said, uh, you know how to change tires? And I said, yeah, born and raised in. And he goes, well, good, lose the suit and get out there and start changing GR 7015s on these 12 Monte Carlos we're waiting for. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was great training. Um, actually, that was the beginning of MasterCare back in the day. People were getting all these free tires and uh, decided that, hey, now's the time to be buying shocks and, and struts and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was it. That and probably winters and summers changing truck tires uh, during college kind of kept me studying a little harder than I probably, uh, didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. And I'm that much more thankful and appreciative of our service techs that do that day in and day out it makes a big difference. Absolutely. So as a hundred year old business, so what are the keys to longevity that you would share with other tire dealers out there? Well, you know, John, I'm sure as, as most business people would say, you know, having great people is the, is the key to being successful. Um, we really try to treat our team as a family. It's a family business. We try to try to keep it that way because really they are. Um, you know, I've had some some people who've been with us a long time. They get mad and they'll come in and say, I'm quitting. I says, you can't. And I says, it'll say, why not? I says, because you're part of the family. Oh, okay. By God, I'll, I'll take it <laughs> there and get back to work and uh, get it rolling from there. But, you know, it, it can be same, same, same can be said for our customers on there, whether it's retail, commercial, wholesale, and you got to do whatever it takes to care of them, take care of them, just like family, just like you were probably taught in the stores, you know, treat everybody that walks in like it's uh, somebody's grandmother. Very, very good. 
So, Zig, what piece of advice, uh, something that you either learned from your dad or something that's been passed down through generations that you can share with us? I mean, dad always taught me to work hard uh, and do whatever it takes to take care, to take care of the customer. Um, you know, his attitude on life has always been just so positive. I mean, his glass isn't half full. His glass has been overflowing pretty much his whole life. And he was kind of one of those, you know, attitude kind of guys that says, yeah, you know, it's not what happens to you, but how you respond to it. And he always tried to keep things, you know, on the positive side. You know, every time I come in and say, dad, we've got a problem. He goes, John, he says, there are no problems, only opportunities. I'm like, okay, dad, I got, we got a big opportunity here. We got to deal with, <laughs> but I take it that way with, uh, you know, with my people as well. And, and uh, just try to keep things positive and, and really have fun. I mean, that makes a big difference for us. Sure. Now you're passing this on because uh, your son's in the business also. Is that right? Yeah. My son, Jay, John Ziegler III, is in the, uh, in the business. And uh, yeah, kind of the similar kind of stuff. Um, you know, I had jotted down a couple, a couple notes for him when he took on his first uh, job after being a store manager. He's a commercial supervisor now. And just, just you know, basic common sense stuff. You know, it's and one thing I learned from some, I can't remember if it's my dad or whatever, but you know, it said, treat people like they make a difference and they will. And that really has kind of stuck with me. And, uh, you know, even, even my bosses, you know, I was growing up in that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I'm, re- I'm very proud of him. Uh, he's done a great job. He stayed positive. He's smarter than I am. He got some of his mother's brain. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, I think he'll be a fine leader for, uh, for Ziegler Tire. And of course, he learned everything from the most important person, his mom, my wife, Chris, who's, you know, she's the smart one in the family and she's the leader and, and uh, she's done a, a great job. Next generation from there, you know, hopefully we do have a uh, John Herbert Ziegler IV, which in my first prop of the day, I'll, I'll expose here. This, uh, this is a picture we had from uh, actually from Mother's Day. It's John That's Ziegler. a great picture. John Ziegler, one, two, three and four. And uh, Jay Z four is a bigger pain in the butt than his dad, which I didn't think was possible. So <laughs> it's uh, it's it's paybacks or hell for him, but it's uh, it's a blast to watch as a grandfather. Uh, that's a great photo, great photo. So Zig, you worked with some great people over the years. Uh, do you want to talk about any of your mentors that you had? Uh, sure, from early sure. on, absolutely. Um, I'm not, I'm not a real smart guy, but I've been thankful to be around a lot of smart people and have tried to learn as much as I can from them. You know, other than my dad, I'd probably say my cousin, Bill Ziegler, who's the president of our company, has been the biggest influence for me. Uh, you know, he remembers everything. He's got a great analytical mind. And um, you know, he's one of those guys, you know, take, let's get all the information. Let's assess the situation. Let's make the best business decision that we can and uh, kind of go from there. He's the easy accountant. I'm the sales guy. So I'm more of the shoot from the hip kind of thing. And, you know, well, let's do this. Oh, let's do that. And then you'd have to remind me about stuff like cash flow and that sort of thing. But he's been, uh, you know, I've learned the most from him. You know, the, the older Ziggler's, my grandfather was a, uh, was a, was a great guy. You know, you just remember stuff, your grandpa, whether it was down in his basement, learning how to smoke a pipe when you were 12 years old or and grandma yelling at us or, you know, uncle Herb, uncle or uncle Harold, my dad's brother, was uh, Ziegler's first commercial salesman. And uh, he always tells a story, Uncle Oliver would send him out to go sell tires. And uh, he didn't have a price sheet. He didn't know what to sell him at. He said, just go sell him. Just go sell him. <laughs> so Harold was great for that. In fact, he uh, he took me to my first Indy 500 in 1970. The uh, wow. Al Unser and the Johnny Lightning special. And I've had a love for the sport ever since. I just just missed Mario at 69. That was been the uh, that would have been the first one from there. Um. You know, I look in the in the industry and stuff. There's a couple people that uh, that I really respect and have learned a lot from. You know, a lot of the guys down at the Grismer Tire Group. John Marshall is like one of my favorites. He's uh, you know he's smart and he's analytical, and I just love listening to him. And uh, he's great. I remember we were on one trip, and it was uh, we actually went to a butterfly museum with the uh, with the girls, and I had a good time. So if John can help me enjoy a butterfly museum then uh, he's pretty good. And all those guys down there, Jerry McCormick, I learned about kicking butt and taking names. Steve Whitehead's a great guy down there. So that was a big one as well. Um, Larry Morgan was a, uh, was a, yep. and I, was only, I wasn't around Larry often, you know, when we went down for the tabernacle of golf, but I was always happy to have him pick me up at the airport and just talk for 10 minutes or so. You know, I'd, I'd try to pick his brain because, 
he's one smart dude, man. He's driven and, uh, and he was, he was great. I, you'd always say the, uh, the two best times of us getting together for the tabernacle was the two times was when everybody showed up and then when everybody left, cause he was, <laughs> He, he always said that was uh, that was interesting one for him. A lot of people at Bridgestone Firestone were good that way. You know, you know, Johnny G, you know, look at you, the, the LeBron James of sales motivation. Hello? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you say Michael your, Jordan or LeBron yeah, yeah, James? Yeah, I had, to, I had to throw that in there. You know, John Lampy's leadership, you know, when he was uh, president and CEO, you know, he was a Sigma Chi, he was a, you know, same brother and stuff, but he was such a regular guy in such a big business going through so many issues and just took it all in stride and uh, re- relied on his people to do the right thing. And I learned a lot from him that way. You know, a lot of those people, uh, you know, Al Spire, the, the uh, racing guy was great. I remember how proud I was when, you know, when, when Firestone came back and won the race, Mike Cox, my, Cox, my first boss, I learned a lot from him. Uh, and even all the local guys, you know, the the other dealers out there, the, the Barry Fitzgeralds at H and F Tire and Tony Sagonas, and you know all those guys getting together on that, the, the Raven Tires of the world, you know, and that taught me how to laugh more than anything else. Um, so it's, you know, I guess it's it's uh, you, you learn what you can to to uh, do the best you can, and and even more important, and have fun along the way. Well, you've been surrounded by some really uh, good people. Yeah, and yeah those are some absolutely great names yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Rhodes, Mark Rhodes and I were both kind of came up at around, around the same time. It's a couple of years younger out of Plaza Tire. And I remember going to uh, we were roommates in Alaska for a Dayton Tire trip. And, you know, we've we stay in close contact. And I really, really enjoy talking to him and getting his perspective on everything because he's he's really, uh, really done it right. He's done a great he's job. a great guy. Smart guy. Done yeah. very well. Also. Yeah. Yeah. And like Phil, you Phil Pacey was the other one, too. That guy worked like forever and he was so smart and so organized, which I'm not, but I always got a kick out of talking to everybody. He was, uh, I always, Phil was great. He was always great. And I got to see him a few times a year. So on the, uh, so I learned a lot from people at, at, uh, at Firestone made a big difference for me as well as the rest of the, uh, the industry. And, you know, we all have friends, not in the tire business. I got a buddy Dean who's in a construction business and he's just super smart. And, you know, of course I already mentioned my wife, so can't give enough credit. You know, it's, uh, I'm quite a project. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zig, you worked in so many aspects of the business, uh, seeing Ziegler Tire grow to the size it is today. What are some of the challenges that the business over the 100 years has experienced uh, that you feel has changed the DNA of the company from back in 1919? Um, you know, I'd probably say trying to maintain the uh, consistent service to our to our uh, to our customers, you know, we've expanded to a lot more locations, you know, around most of the Midwest and now into uh, <clears throat> Indiana and Kentucky. You know, trying to maintain that, make sure that the, the Big Mac they get in in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, is the same as a Big Mac they get in Altoona, Pennsylvania, and try to work with it from there. You know, we we uh, survived the uh, survived the Great Depression. Um, you know, so I'm proud of that with my, my, uh, what the family went through. Cause we're a pretty conservative company. In fact, you know, we, we, you know, we were in, in not in good shape, you know, the banks shut down and Firestone, you know, our, every Firestone and those guys kept, kept us in business. So we've always had great respect for that and, uh, makes a business big, big decision from there. You know, we had the great recession back in 08, 09. That was the first time we ever had to really downsize. Uh, which was very difficult saying goodbye to some good people. That's a hard thing to do in a family business. Uh, but we learned a lot from it and we've been, uh, been meaner, meaner since. So just got to keep it rolling from there. Is there Back a story had- there somewhere that I thought you shared about uh, the depression? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, after, after the depression, uncle Oliver didn't trust the banks anymore. So up until about the mid seventies on, uh, on payday, nobody got a check. They got cash. Uncle, Uncle Oliver <laughs> made sure we paid all of our employees in green cash, so that uh, so the people would have it and, and not uh, run the risk of of having that issue again. I I still can't believe we did that. Uncle Uncle Herb would come to the store. You know, I was pumping gas at the time with you know all these little envelopes full of uh, you know you get at the bank with change in it and a, and a little little stick you know a little tab with the the uh, the ticker tape thing from the adding machine. That was that stuff you never forget. It was crazy. That is a great story. And that went on almost in 1970 or so? Yeah, that was into the 70s. Yeah, yeah. Cousin Bill came to work with the family 
Oh, uh, about that time. And that's when it said, you know, Hey, you know, Oliver, we got to kind of, <laughs> got to kind of move on from that. And that's, uh, and then that's what we did, obviously. Uh, that's a great story. Well, Hey, if I lost all my money in the banks and, and, uh, yeah, I'd have trust factors too. So yep. it makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Zig, we shared a lot of great times all over the world together. Uh, do you have any favorite memories you'd like to share? Wow. Um, I think Johnny, actually, if, if we would have started on this question, we'd probably run out of time. There's been so many good times. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I have to go back to, uh, you know, your, uh, we, we referred to him as Gamma Ramas, you know, whether it was at the, uh, uh, at the New Orleans Superdome, you know, with race cars running around inside of there or the Bellagio with three or 4,000 people and, and, uh, you know, Jay Leno and Mario and all those guys there. Those things were, those were just crazy. They were, they were the best. They were absolutely uh, fantastic. They uh, were. The, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that, uh, that tabernacle of golf thing we did a few times together. Oh, yeah. I'll, ne- I'll never forget your, uh, you know, if, if you remember when you were a rookie, you had to, you're kind of like a pledge and you had to uh, give a speech the last night to see if they'd allow you to stay in. You're the only person I ever remember that had uh, props you know, you're putting these stickers up on the TV set and all around the room and everything. And, and, uh, <laughs> man, I'll never forget that one. That was good. Uh, yeah. Your bears coat from the, uh, from the uh, hundred year anniversary, there was a uh, prop number. Oh, there two. we are. Hey. There we are at the football hall of fame. We were honored to have you, have you there as a, uh, as a guest and, and appreciated that very much. The year, the, uh, the year we went to Japan with, uh, with, with Shua Shibashi, and that group, Steve Gray and, and Jim Berlin and, and all those Pee Wee Rhodes, I remember, lost 30 pounds because he was a meat and potatoes guy. <laughs> and he, and he, I remember. But, you know, it was so much fun, you know, watching you talk to, you know, speaking with the the, uh, the Japanese like school children and all the neat places we went. And uh, so that was that was a blast. My, my key success to that was uh, guys like Pee Wee. You know, uh, meat and potatoes, they see some of this stuff jumping off their plate yeah, and live, yeah. you know, fish and whatever. Yeah. And, and so I would bring literally two cases of M&Ms and, and uh, Three Musketeers and right. Oreo cookies. <laughs> and guys would knock on my door like at 10 o'clock at night and say, hey, I'm still hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you were listening to a Bulls game. I got to ask you, I think you listened to like the, the Bulls were in the in the finals, I think. And that's when cell phones, they charge you by the second. And you're yeah. you're listening to a Bulls game at home on your on your cell phone, probably. I, I, I would like to know what the uh, what the phone bill was for that for a sixty minute game back in the uh, whatever years it was. That was a while ago. It, it wow. was it was a lot of money. I can tell it, you that it, it was a lot of money. You know, again, yeah, getting go. You know, going to Indy's always been a blast. I had a chance to be in Victory Lane the year before last. Uh, uh, that was that was awesome. Um, you know, Bridgestone Invitationals. You know, that year we were in Formula One and, and went to Monaco. That was just ridiculously fun. It was probably one of the coolest trips maybe of all time. Super Bowl. I uh, got to go to the Super Bowl in Tampa. I remember being there. Me and my buddy, Dean, we've had Browns season tickets since 1979. And we always said we would never go to the Super Bowl unless our team was playing. So this opportunity came about, and I, I told him, he says, we can't go. I said, well, I'm not going to the Super Bowl. I said, Springsteen's playing at halftime. So I'm basically <laughs> going to a Springsteen concert. And, oh, by the way, they're playing a football game there, too. There so, you go. Uh, so that was, that was great. Again, as I mentioned, you know, I had a chance to go to uh, – I don't know if you were on that trip to Alaska, and I met Rhodes and, and John Lampy and Larry yeah. and uh, Phil Rabin. I mean, those, that, those are priceless trips. It's uh, – Great stuff. Even with the commercial guys, you know, we got a chance to go to Scotland. I you know, met Jerry Bauer and Paul Swensel and, you know, say no more. They just make you laugh and, uh, you know, sing and Danielson and all those guys. It was, it was spectacular. Like I say, I'm a, I'm a lucky guy, man. I, uh, I really had an opportunity to meet and have fun with some great people and, and uh, it's taught me a lot. So Zig, I say this all the time. The tire business is a relationship business. So in your opinion, how do you build long-term relationships? Well, you know, I've kind of always said, not always said, I kind of learned a long time ago and I've tried to remember it, that, uh, you know, we're, we're not in the tire business selling people. We're in the people business selling tires. And, wow, and that's great. Those, and, make, yeah, and making those relationships with the people, you know, makes all makes makes the difference. I mean, that, that friendship, that partnership, 
Um, you know, Ziegler Tire with their customers, uh, Firestone with, with Ziegler Tire, um, it, it still it still makes a difference. As you said, people deal with people and that just, you know, I learned that, remember, I've always remembered that. That's always gone a long way with me. And a, a Firestone salesman from Harvey Firestone came and signed you back in 1919. Is that correct? Uh, Sign Ziegler? Yeah. 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 Just a quick story. There was, uh, there was four brothers and um, the father had passed away. Oliver was in his probably uh, mid twenties or so. And uh, they, they operated a, a saloon. They operated a bar about 20 miles South of here. And obviously pro- and prohibition came about and that was not good for the, uh, for the bar business. <laughs> So uh, Oliver moved the family to uh, to Canton, and I met with Harvey's uh, one of his salespeople, and that's how we uh, that's how we got in the uh, in the business, and we're very uh, thankful a, for that. That's a great story. So, uh, how about you? You know who your oldest customer might still be? Uh, you know, it's a good question, and it's probably the, the companies like the Timken Roller Bearing Company. Uh, Got uh, W.L. Logan Trucking, Nichols Bakery, you know, again, 100-year-old businesses that have, uh, you know, have, have stayed in the business for a long time. It's, uh, you know, we kind of keep working with the, with everybody that way, and, uh, and it does make a big difference, Johnny. That's that's awesome. That's very cool. So, Ziegler Tire is the oldest Firestone dealer in the world, and you've stuck by the brand all these years. So, wh- why did you do that? Firestone and the Ziegler family both shared great loyalty to each other. Uncle Oliver was very thankful Harvey Firestone gave us the opportunity to be in business and helped us out during the Depression, as I, uh, as I had mentioned. It's always been a great partnership. We never carried another brand until the mid-70s uh, when a, a company named uh, Bridgestone uh, came, to the oh. US and, came to the U.S. and asked us to be a, a direct partner. And that's when we, we first started getting along, getting, uh, starting carrying the Bridgestone line. So, um, Interesting. Yeah, I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. So that was, that was the first line that we, ever, uh, that we ever carried that was not Firestone, which, you know, in this day, you know, everything's multi-brand and it makes a, uh, makes a huge difference. You know, the people at Bridgestone, Firestone, from, you know, from what I remember, you know, the Tom Kefuses, the Bill Pranskys, uh, you know, Carl, you know, we had Bud Snyder was our local guy forever. You know, we got Marty now. They they you know, they do whatever they can still, although it's a bit more challenging now than it seemed to be in the past. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Zig, I really want to thank you for being part of Johnny G and Friends and taking the time to, to do this podcast. And good luck to you and everything in the future. And I'll be in Akron in July. Let's get together and play some golf together. Buddy. That, that, that sounds great. I appreciate the opportunity. I'd have to say I'm honored to be one of Johnny G's friends. So thank uh, you. Thank you very much. You're the best, buddy. Out. Just because you want to feel the open road doesn't mean you want to hear it. Firestone Weather Grip Tires with less noise for quiet comfort. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone.